So we've got Ken Price here from Samsung to tell us all about the iPad. Oh, oh, I just threw that at you. I oh my God, man, what are you talking <laughs> I about? I totally no, did that. We're here to talk about the Galaxy S4. Of course we are. So you guys are calling this the life companion device. What does that even mean? Sure. Well, I think first of all, it's an acknowledgement of how important these devices are to us, whatever they are. We happen to think we make the best one, obviously, but uh, the Galaxy S4 can be you know, part of your life in the ways that you expect through communication and entertainment and consumption. But we've thought of other things that you can do with a device that's so intimate and is part of your life, such as monitoring your personal health, for example. Okay. So in this way, we think we've thought of a very complete way in which the device fits into your life. So let's, uh, let's go into one feature that I thought was really cool, and I want to sure. get right into S Translator. Sure. Because uh, the Galaxy S3 was built for humans, was the tagline. Right. So this is built for humans who have a life, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. And okay. one of the things that you're going to do in your life is travel. Okay. Or, you're, or in this country in particular, you're going to encounter a situation where maybe you want to make a simple communication and, and, and have that translate on the fly. Okay, now when they first demoed this to me, it was German, which I wasn't able to validate mm. if it was actually correct anyway. So go ahead sure. and say something and let's see the French translation. Sure. Well, actually, I thought uh, this might be something even better if you... I just want to make sure. sure there's no complaining afterwards, so I think you should be the guy. To avoid any... Oh, hold on. Let me... Uh, oh, cancel. Let's try this one more time. Speak English. To avoid complaints, we're having me do the voiceover. All right. There you go. It actually works. There's some simple phrases that are in the device itself, so you don't uh, constantly need a network connection. But we have also integrated this feature into messaging, into email, and into the web browser so that you can do translations that are more complicated okay. using network services. And it works with both text and voice, correct? You can play That's it back. That's right. That's exactly correct. Very, very cool. So yep. it, with respect to sort of making it part of your life, uh, tell me about Air Motion. Sure. Well, there are a number of gestures that we have been able to build in because of the sensors. You know, we, we take advantage of the fact there's a front-facing camera, for example, to keep the screen on. And that's something that folks that are familiar with the Galaxy S3 or Note 2 will recognize. But we've also been able to use sensors that allow you to actually gesture at the phone to either turn it on or to, to show notifications or to uh, be able to scroll web pages and uh, gallery and uh, among your gallery photo without actually having to touch the phone. The advantage being, you know, the less touching, the less accumulation of fingerprints on the screen and that kind of thing. So show me an example of that with your fancy little windowed case you've got over there. Sure. Well, for example, I mean, even with the windowed case, for this a slight magnetic sensor in here, and so you can see that I have a home screen. Then when I ch when I close the home screen, I don't have to keep the screen on constantly, so I'm not draining the whole battery, but it is giving me, you know, basic information. If a call comes in, I can actually swipe from left to right and it'll receive that call. Very, very or cool. Or when, when the screen dims out, um, as such as you saw there, I can actually just wave over the phone and suddenly you know, information will appear that it shows me whether I have messages or phone calls received, battery information, other things that I could set up. Great for if you're in a meeting. So for example, mm -hmm. right now, while you're supposed to be talking to me, you could have just as easily been checking your text I, messages. I could have been. <laughs> and I, I wasn't doing that, though. Really, I wasn't. <laughs> I'm not sure if I believe you. <laughs> Tell me about S-Health. Sure. Well, another you know, advantage of having a device with you all the time would be to, or another application or use case would be in monitoring your activity level, the kinds of food and the calories that you're, that you're uh, taking in. Um, and you know, what we noticed is that there are a number of applications that are out there which are good, um, but they're all kind of in and of themselves somewhat fragmented. So yeah. our idea was to create a widget or a hub that would allow uh, you know, all these data sources to come together so that you could get a meaningful way of keeping track of it. So you get your pedometer, you get your caloric intake, you can log your exercise. You can yes. even take pictures of your food and log it in there, am I right? That's right. In fact, and that's one thing that we noticed with some of the applications that, such as barcode readers and sort of thing, that it's, you weren't able to sort of customize. So if you weren't, didn't happen to be eating the food that was served by that program, for example, there's no way to put that in. So. You know, we try to allow people to customize apps, and that's an example. Okay, now a camera is another part of the whole with you all the time, uh, part of your, your life thing. Um, what have you guys done to make the camera dramatically better? Sure, and well, people would expect the hardware to be better, so it happens to have a 13 megapixel camera, which will be interesting. But because of the processing power and the speed of the device, we're actually able to do things that, um, that take advantage of that. So for example, 
you know, if you're anything like me and if you take a lot of pictures, you're probably not in pictures very often. So being able to take a picture simultaneously while you, uh, and put yourself in that by uh, taking a picture with the rear facing and the front facing camera at the same time is something that you can do, something that we call dual shot. And does that work with, uh, with video as well? It does. So for example, uh, you know, maybe you're on the hero roller coaster and you want to see your own reaction as you're going down, you'd be able to take a video of, of the actual roller coaster experience and your reaction to being on that roller coaster at the same time. Very cool. So it takes a lot of features as well from the Galaxy camera, like your best photo, your, um, your best face, where you can swap right. out photos, swap out faces, get rid of blinking. But uh, tell me about story albums and share shot. Sure. Well, with the share shot, for you know, we partner that with the fact that with the, with the Galaxy S4, as we started with the GS3, you get a 50 gigabyte uh, two-year subscription to Dropbox. So you can set that Dropbox account up so that it'll automatically back your photos up which we know can be a pain. Th those are maybe some of the more painful things you lose if you ever lose your device. So having that kind of connectivity and backup is a good idea for users, absolutely. Um, with the story album, you know, again, this is something that uh, we notice, you know, you sort of create an ex a set of experiences. You can tag the photos or you can choose from the gallery and you can create a quick uh, album experience for the device or you can get that printed out. In fact, you can even get a book made. Um, we have a partnership with Blurb in a number of countries where you can publish your storybook album and have a book, a hardcover book received. Oh, that's very yeah. cool. Actually, my wife had a Blurb book done once. She said the process was pretty painless overall. So there, there's something we haven't talked Thanks about already. Endorsement. That's great. Uh, this is something that I uh, didn't say was going to be on our agenda, but I want you to talk about the ad hoc Wi-Fi functionality. So music, pictures, documents, games. Sure. Uh, this is cool. Sure, Why? absolutely. Well, Samsung is all about sharing in multiple ways. We have, you know, different radios for different purposes. But one thing we noticed that even with what we done with the GS3 and the Note was creating an ad hoc peer-to-peer -peer network using Wi-Fi Direct um, rather than just being in a similar network domain. I realize that's a little, you know, techie, but, but uh, you know, being able to quickly share a music experience or photos or a document or play a game without needing any kind of network except the network that could be created through Wi-Fi Direct and the device itself. So that's really what the idea is there. Okay, uh, tell me about Watch On. So you've got an infrared rem uh, remote built into the phone. This is something that we haven't seen before from you guys on the Galaxy S series, is it? That's right, not on the phones. We've had it on the tablets, but yep. we haven't had it on the phones. So you have an infrared uh, blaster now built in, so you can use this. But I think you know, users are gonna say, well, how's that better than just using my remote? which also is infrared, and, or the set-top box and the programming guide. So the idea of Watch On is to be able to create rich content through the electronic, pro, uh, electronic programming guides that you can download. So, you know, whether you're in, you know, based on postal code and, and profile and carrier user um, provider, you can uh, uh, download what's currently on. You can get information that's richer than you would through the programming guide. I mean, uh, does, it, does it integrate with services like Netflix? Are there other services coming? Yes, and you know, and that's the beauty. When you think about it, what is the modern kind of consumption process? Is it, and it's not defined just probably any longer by just what you're getting through, let's say, a cable service. It's defined by Netflix and other providers where the, the mobile device can be the hub of that and then it can be projected on a TV or other devices. So thinking about that, what is the kind of modern remote look like? And it looks like an aggregator for, for being able to check out a marketplace for these kinds of services. You know, what's available, what prices, and that sort of thing. Watch On is intended to facilitate that. Very, very cool. So I want to finish up with showing a couple of the accessories that Samsung has coming for the S4. So we saw the windowed case, which right. saves screen power because it only has to turn on a little bit at a time if you That's want. Right. Um, show me show me this one and this one and this one most importantly. Sure, absolutely. Well, you know, I mean, people like different colors and even though we have, we'll have a black and a white version of the phone, um, you know, from a battery cover point of view, but lots of different <laughs> colors just in time for spring, well, your oranges, your greens, your pinks your blues, which everybody likes to do. We also have a wireless charging option though because we know that um, you know folks have said hey it would be just convenient to be able to lie the device down so on the back um, as an option you can get this wireless charging cover. It's slightly different. It replaces the battery cover that comes standard with the device. You place that on, you plug this wireless charging mat in, lay the device down and it charges. So nice and easy. I think that's pretty much it. Thank you so much, Ken. This has been absolutely fantastic. 
So uh, you guys are doing much more than just putting a faster processor in, I think is the point you're trying to make here, and uh, I'd love to do this again sometime, maybe when the S5 comes out or whatever else the case may be. Thank you for the opportunity, really appreciate it, thanks.